We're back in Berlin where our journey started in late January. We've traveled over 14,000 kilometers by train, bus and ferry, visited 25 different cities and talked to 38 leaders of our industry. When talking to these leaders, it's clear that we are an industry that's aware of its own power and reach, but unsure what to do with it. The whole world plays games now. There's over 3 billion players and, and, and rising. Games yeah, are a lot of power, so it's probably a matter of time until the narratives that the games are pretty much talking around can be pushed there, because you have a very big audience that's listening to you. No. Yeah. That's the thing, like, uh, it's uh, exactly the same as with sexist ads, so it's, uh, it's a very big issue, and we need to start talking about it and raise the awareness. Yeah. So, but we need to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're the, we're the med go to medium. So mm -hmm. if we start talking about it, I mean, start talking, making games around it, or like making it a topic or theme in the games, then it's, it can have its impact. Mm -hmm. Close to half the world's population plays games, and it's the number one pastime amongst young people. You could therefore argue that all we need to do is to switch to renewable energy and wait for all of us to satisfy our emotional needs in the digital realm. So, games have the ability to satisfy this 80% of economic yeah. activity that goes into satisfying emotional needs yeah. with a fixed cost to the environment. The reality, however, is that with the enormous reach of our industry comes an enormous responsibility to raise awareness and to inspire climate action. Would you say the average gamer mm -hmm. um, already has touch points to sustainability? Um, probably not. Probably <laughs> not? not. Yeah. yeah. It's also clear that this is the time for our industry to be on the right side of history when it comes to fighting climate change. And even if you don't care what kind of a planet we live for the future generations, your customers do and they will vote with their wallets. Being environmentally friendly, being carbon neutral, supporting, uh, supporting this and other issues like that will become increasingly important. I think consumers will want to, will seek out and want to support companies that support this. I thought that it's not a cool thing to do. I think people will actually want to vote with their kind of wallets ultimately to do that. Despite recent layoffs and talk of generative AI replacing creatives in our industry, the reality is that most game companies are constantly struggling to attract great talent. And as with consumers, creatives are paying much more attention to the climate credentials of their prospective employers. We're definitely in a talent war at the moment, uh, and I think our employees care deeply about the environment, and they expect our, uh, Miniclip's business to reflect that care, I think, in the way that it addresses topics like climate change. So I think it's really good for businesses to embrace this because it is something that employees care about and actually also your players care about too. I think everyone who runs a company has a responsibility to, to make a company that's about more than just shareholder profits. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think looking at the, at the, you know, the, my experiences with hiring over the last years, it makes me super happy to see that this is more and more something that younger employees will select for. Mm -hmm. They, they're, you know, they're really concerned about whether the company is run by a bunch of greedy assholes or if mm -hmm. it's something, some people that seem to actually have some integrity. I think this is a small thing but it's a signal, like, mm -hmm. both out to the players, we as a company care about this, mm -hmm. maybe you should think about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's also internally, like, employer branding and, and all those components as well. Like, mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. a company that actually cares about stuff yeah. that you care about as mm -hmm. an individual working here. Yeah. I think we're able to hire better because yeah. we have a, an office that is green mm -hmm. and we have an ag agenda that is fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think from, from that point of view, we have a strong sense of purpose mm -hmm. among employees. Mm -hmm. uh, we have colleagues who really burn for this. Yeah. Um, and then I think it's, it also resonates with our audience. There's mm -hmm. a big connection with our posts about these items mm -hmm. that actually have higher engagement on social media. Okay. We also know that we provoke. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we feel is just fair and humanistic mm -hmm is considered progressive in certain yeah. parts of the world. Yeah, yeah. We can achieve a lot by just donating some of our profits to fighting climate change, but there are many other ways that we can play a key role in building a better future for our planet. There's a lot of initiatives, you know, whether it's a, it's a revenue share, um, it's company initiatives, it's, uh, it's, it's partnering with different, different um, organizations to make a change, and, and there's so many good organizations out there, and it's really, if you look at some of the revenues of, of mobile games and industry, you know, just a tiny fraction can make a massive difference, right? Yes. And I think that inspires, mobile's always first. Mobile's the first to develop a lot of a lot of technologies, a lot of ways of interacting with content and interacting with audiences. Why can't we be the first and, and, and the leader in, in changing the world for the better uh, through, through different green initiatives and, and um, 
But I think the power of the giant mobile audience and the fact that you know mobile is with you every single day, everywhere you go, I think there's opportunities um, far and wide to take advantage of that. Yeah, I think we have two stuff. The first one can be like on the in-app purchase side. Mm -hmm. It can be uh, uh, just give one specific in-app purchase in the game, which will be called, I don't know, like uh, a gift to the environment. Yeah. And like that, the people will pay. Mm -hmm. The problem is that Google or Apple will took a share, mm -hmm. which is not mm -hmm. that much fair yeah. because it's a gift. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, it can still be a, a, a good point. And mm -hmm. the second one is just to do like a lot of uh, stuff are doing right now. It's just to do like one day, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. the 1st of February. Mm -hmm. To give all the money that we are doing from in-app purchase or even with ads yeah. to a specific association or something okay. like this. This one can be more easy and at the end it will just depend on the, on the ethic of the publisher to say that yes, yeah. we will give that. But it's something simple, it's yeah. something that will not impact that much the publisher at the end. Yeah. Most of the games industry's environmental footprint comes from players playing the games we create. But we also create physical goods that have a concrete negative impact on the environment. The gaming industry is also a big industry where people consume a lot of merch products. There's probably a lot of overproduction. And yeah, my um, vision or mission is to help games, to help people that produce merch to don't end up with so much waste. I'm not saying that upcycling is the only solution for it, yeah. you know? But I feel like it is a good uh, step in between. Nice. If you know, if you know what I mean. And it, right now we do have all the stuff, so we might as well use it. We also travel a lot for business, and unfortunately, most of it is still by plane. There's a lot more we can do, definitely. There's a lot more events like us can. We are, by nature, we travel a lot. I travel all around the world, and and you know, am I thinking enough about the the impact of that? Probably not. So I hmm. think there's a, I think there's a way to go, and we can obviously hopefully help a bit to kind of continue the education. I go to Paris quite often to yeah. visit family and friends mm -hmm. and now I know that it's possible to yeah. take a train between Copenhagen and Paris and it's doable. Like in just one go, uh, one, one day. And of course the platforms and servers which our games run on are a massive source of emissions which someone will have to deal with. And it's a company, again, we, we are we're a measurement solution that doesn't require user-level data. When you don't require user-level data, you need substantial less computing mm -hmm. resources. Okay. So, like our, I don't know, our uh, Amazon, uh, our AWS uh, bill is a one thousandth of what usual tracking and attribution solutions uh, would cost. And less computing, um, basically okay. less impact on the environment. If we accept the responsibility as game developers that the carbon emissions of the game devices when they are playing our games are our responsibility, then we should be dealing with that issue. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, and I know that this is also a controversial opinion, what would happen if the responsibility for carbon emissions was actually a platform level issue. App Store, Google Play, Epic, Steam. They have all the data. <laughs> PlayStation and Xbox. Mm -hmm. They have the data, they know their devices, and they benefit from, by, well, about that 30% mm -hmm. from every transaction on, on those platforms. So should they bear more responsibility about the content consumption on their platforms. Mm -hmm. That's a political level discussion. Communicating to your users is sort of passing the buck downstream. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm saying that companies should take care of this and hopefully platforms should take care of this. Mm -hmm. Taking responsibility starts at home or in this case at the office. There are already forward looking companies tracking, reporting, reducing and offsetting their emissions and making reducing the environmental footprint a priority. We also like look at our like, uh, carbon impacts in general mm. over a year, so we kind of compensate for any emissions that we create by mm. flying between our offices or the electricity that powers the servers. Mm -hmm. We also calculate the energy to charge people's phones, okay. everyone playing our games and compensate for that as well. So we try to be as kind of zero impact as we can mm -hmm. in terms of climate footprint. Okay. I spent this morning uh, 
meeting with the people that are helping us uh, set up our new office space. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the conversations that we had today are talking about the climate footprint mm -hmm. of the choices that we'll be making mm -hmm. as we're choosing the lighting fixtures mm -hmm. or we're yeah. looking at like right which parts of what's in the office can we keep mm -hmm. what can we polish up mm -hmm. without having to throw away what's yeah. already there uh, and making sure that like in the best interest of us and naturally the planet going forward it's like mm -hmm. we're doing the making smart choices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And ultimately, I know that some of the people say the little things doesn't matter, right? But we mm. have to tackle the big ones. But to me, that is only partly true because with the little things, I affect already people around me and they have to think about it. They, they can't just ignore the subject, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is also having a long-term impact. I think there's stuff you can do that's not very expensive. It's not super complicated. Mm -hmm but you feel that you're doing something. Mm -hmm. And since this is true to things we believe in, then you should do it. If we couldn't care less about the climate and did this just to strengthen our employer and brand, that would be both not very truthful, mm -hmm. but also that would shine through quickly yeah. Yeah. and would be very short lasting. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think, but this feels like a real issue mm -hmm. that we care about. And mm -hmm. then I think it's good to show that. Yeah. One area where the games industry is taking the lead is in protecting and restoring natural environments. Nature-based solutions are the only realistic way of drawing meaningful amounts of emissions out of the atmosphere and slowing down global warming. So it started again like around two years ago that we started talking about like what is the impact that we are making or how we can make a better impact in uh, in the climate area mm -hmm. and and we started locally um, so we purchased 17 trees okay and we were very happy very <laughs> proud and that's when we realized like this is nothing we were part of the global game jam last mm -hmm, year mm -hmm. and with that we planted a number of trees we, we create a lot of awareness in three hour games no. and in one of them it really worked uh, mm -hmm. so lots of people were talking about it and were donating for okay. the forests and uh, with a couple it didn't really and we got yeah. also negative feedback like well, why are you being political yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't want this bullshit I just want to have fun mm -hmm. Uh, but we are going to we, we are joining again the global mm -hmm. game gym this year yeah. with a different topic but yeah cool. Uh, we're part of a group called Playing for the Planet, mm -hmm. which is kind of a UN initiative that we yeah. joined a few years ago as one of the first companies. So we've done that over a number of years now, running events like in, in the sense of reminding people that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the reality is actually out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so There's been different topics about, uh, I think the last one was about the oceans. Mm -hmm. And we've done these kind of tree planting initiatives like you, you play part of the game mm -hmm. and then we will pay for planting trees, depending mm -hmm. how many things you collect of this and okay, that, okay. matching donations from players. Ultimately, we were able to pull together a donation of roughly 500,000 euros, which was at the time the, the single largest, or no, not the single largest, but the largest single donation mm -hmm. made, made to the foundation. And that was used to protect two forest regions, one in Lapland and one, well, in, in sort of central Finland as well. And that simple message was really quite enough for mm -hmm. many of the people uh, who were contacted and, and mm -hmm. for the people who wanted to pitch in the, the whole idea of, and the simplicity of it was appealing. Like, mm -hmm. okay, just money in, forest saved. In the end, the only way to tackle climate change is through social change. And this is where the games industry can have its biggest impact through its massive reach and level of engagement. We need to um, inspire our players to action. One of the things that we did with Alba and that we tried to do with Alba is m help our players become aware of their own power. There's a lot of already education out there. The question is, how do you move people to action? Mm -hmm. So making them aware of their own power, making them aware of the things that they can do in their own life. Obviously, we need to have good games that do it. And I think do it in a good allegorical way that those not necessarily like, you know, putting it in your face really blatantly, but, you know, influencing through narrative, because ultimately that's what stories do. They influence thought, they influence perception of, of the way things are. And I think games are perfectly positioned for that. 
but that's really exciting about games because we can put you in the in the role of the actor and it's you basically doing the the shitty thing in the game in a game because a lot of gameplay not all of it but you know can be very repetitive it can be very you know recursive it can feel like a lot yeah. um, to be exposed and hammered again and yeah. again and again with this type of message that's the opportunity yeah but how far can you go before people yeah. walk away from it and just say like oh boy you know like that's just too much i need to play yeah. something more fun now to get yeah. that out of my head we're slowly i think learning you know kind of the the true power of, of you know the medium and the toolkit yeah. Yeah. um and it is quite real i mean like as you say you know like if you trace the design of a game like like last of us um you can feel kind of the you know the intent of some of these yeah. systems and some of these characters yeah and we have games that are well suited for that like mm -hmm. our biggest product in terms of dau is a, is a trivia game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's really easy to play around with that mm -hmm. having different kind of topics where you mm -hmm. can actually have questions around stuff yeah, that's yeah. concerning the climate yeah. and we work together with i think we work together with greenpeace mm -hmm. with some of these events and mm -hmm. and other organizations around climate change to mm -hmm. kind of raise awareness mm -hmm. whatever message we decide to send through our games mm -hmm. and in the relationship that we foster with our mm -hmm. communities and then how we get to the point where our products can make it into the hands of the players. Mm. And those are two quite different sides yeah. uh, to the coin, if you will, of mm -hmm. tackling climate change. It's not by chance, if you will, like that the big corporate evil destroys the environment, uh, that the headquarters of the foulest players is on an oil drilling platform mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. the coast. Uh, that we have polluted rivers and waterfalls that need to be like a lot of that is just part of the core message of our product. But it matters if you see kindness in a game. It yeah. matters if you see green in a game. It matters if you see social justice in a game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and many of those things are small choices that if you are a game developer or a designer, mm -hmm. My, my credo has been, when given a choice, choose right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because uh, often you have a situation where two things are, are seem equally good. Yeah, yeah. But one of them is a bit more green or a bit, yeah, bit more social yeah. just, and you should always go with that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because some of it is also just about having the conversations in the organization. Yeah. About what could we do? Mm -hmm. We know we have a casual game. We know we have a whatever game. Mm -hmm. What could we add? Mm -hmm. what, what would just make for a nice addition to what we have currently yeah. or do we have currently prototypes or things where if we had the conversation about could it be greener mm -hmm. could it carry a message mm -hmm. could we have responsibility in this game mm -hmm. what would that mean mm -hmm. for some companies it might mean uh, changing the colors slightly mm -hmm. for others it might be a new game mode yeah. yeah but but for me it's it's about starting more and more of those conversations yeah. from the top mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i think that there will be companies or colleagues in all the companies mm -hmm. that that would be excited about it, yeah. Because yeah. it is an agenda that now has sort of it has momentum outside of the industry, yeah. yeah. And it, I, I bet it does inside the industry as well, yeah. Yeah. It just needs leadership support. The games industry has seen decades and decades of essentially non-stop growth, and many of us miss the news that the nerds have won. This massive industry likes to look at itself and says, "Oh, we're just kind of these kids starting up." Like, we're not anymore. We've been around for decades, and we're the largest form of entertainment on Earth. What role do we play, not only as a cultural force in games, but what do we contribute to society? You don't have to wait for the tide to come. You know, yeah. you can sit down and think very consciously about who you want to be as a company and the kind of content you want to create, and very be very mindful of it. With great power comes great responsibility, exactly, right? That's, yeah, we all, we all yeah. know that. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I think we have, we have a responsibility and I think we have opportunities to do that. I think people do care and I think people are doing things. Is it fast enough? Is it? Probably not. But then we're probably faster than our politicians, right? Yeah. Uh, the politicians are somewhere behind. Many of our interviews repeated the phrase, with great power comes great responsibility. But we are still coming to terms with the extent of that power and responsibility that comes with it. Because the moment you start being big, there is like, uh, okay, I'm going to do this cheesy line, but with great <laughs> okay. power comes the great responsibility. Yeah. But it is like that. We have, when, when we have voice, we should use it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not saying that go liberal or conservative. It's more of a where the common sense is. Like mm -hmm. we are all people. 
So we have to help each other. So for me, the climate change issue is more about owning our own industry and setting a good example as we do things. What do you represent in your product and how you communicate mm -hmm. with your community and your audience? Mm -hmm. And what you do as a business yeah. in running your business and getting your product to mm -hmm. market. And you need to take responsibility in both. Mm -hmm. And you absolutely can. The games industry needs to carry its responsibility. Mm -hmm. It needs to be accountable. On this journey we saw the games industry is well on its way in being a major force in the fight against climate change. But it's up to the leaders of the industry to use the platform they have to push for social and political change. Um, I think that's relevant that more people stand up and say, hey, I actually do care. It's just a conversation, and especially if it comes from the CEO or from the yeah. founders, matters a lot. Yeah. Keep talking about the fact that we mm -hmm. have an influence. Mm -hmm. And what we normalize in games matters for yeah. people playing it. Games are the leading medium of the 21st century, and it is time for us to lead. What you do in your office doesn't matter, and what you do with one-day revenue actually doesn't matter mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. But if you can make 4 billion people aware of something, then mm -hmm. I think we have something.